Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 19 of season 1 of the F1 2021 Williams Road to Glory. Yes, just two races to go of the year here as we head to Albert Park. I can't believe we're almost at the end of our first season of this series. Of course, if you missed out on the start of our all new F2 Oscar Piastri Carimo, definitely, definitely recommend going and checking out. The first video went live yesterday. The second video went live earlier on today. Yes, it's it's December and I've managed to do a double upload for you guys as well you know sometimes you know Christmas I've, I've tried to provide you guys uh, with some more Formula One content but heading though to the Australian Grand Prix of course if you missed out on the last video from Brazil I would highly highly recommend going back and check it out it'll be linked in the top right hand corner of your screen somewhere obviously click the little eye if you want to go check out that one as well but at the moment all the progress is still focused on trying to make sure next year's car is ready currently we've got four aero parts left and five chassis part so we should get those done obviously by the end of the year and we're really banking on a lot of teams sort of tripping over themselves and falling backwards to be honest it really does help us out these changes of course the powertrain Mercedes power is always pretty good the durability is pretty good as well so yeah fingers crossed obviously next season with you know the aero and chassis rules we can sort of elevate ourselves up into a consistent midfield runner but yeah let's dive in then here to the Australian Grand Prix weekend Right, well, here we are then, qualifying day back at Albert Park. Always weird now, the fact we just don't seem to see much of Albert Park on F1 2021. Must admit, I, I do miss this circuit. It tends to be a bit of an AI hunting ground. But, yeah, fingers crossed this weekend we can have a good run in the Williams. Really spent a lot of practice trying to tweak the setup and getting everything as we'd like it. But, yeah, going out for our first run on a set of the mediums, just trying to put our bank lap in. To be honest, not really too sure why, of course, but... It oh. And that's immediately going to be the end of that qualifying run, then, as we actually picked up floor damage. Engine cooling isn't going to be as effective, and you'll be incurring drag until we can get you in and start the repairs. The underbody's damaged. Expect significant performance issues until you come in and let us start repairs. Right, let, let's go back to the pits and see how long that takes to repair, then. Not, not the start to quality we needed. Three and a half minutes isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but now it's going to leave us with very little running. We're going to only be able to get two runs in on the softs. Well, just under eight minutes left on the clock then, and currently we are slowest at this stage of qualifying. But let's just see, just immediately feel how much more grip these tyres have got over the mediums. And fingers crossed then as we head back down towards Star 1. This time round we can actually get a full lap in. With a bit of luck breaking just after the 100 meter ball there. Attack the curbs on the way in and on the way out. A lot of Albert Park now. It's just about being really, really careful. You don't overstep the rear end there. Of course, we have made mistakes here before. Bit of a lock up down into turn three. We do collect the car back up and we get it over that turn for apex as well. Avoid the Sussex curb on the outside. Oh, big snap over here as we head through turn five. And lucky to hold on to that. Trying to tap the curbs again through turn six. You've really got to make this place as wide as possible. You know, it's not a conventional street circuit. Of course, it is a street track officially in Formula One. I've actually been around Albert Park before in real life as we get very, very close to the Aramco sponsorships as we head out down what is not technically the back straightaway, but one of the fastest parts of the lap down two gears into the fast chicane. Tap the curbs on the entry and on the exit there. You can use that curb on the outside a little bit more. And you could on F1 at 2020. Breaking at the black box for sector three. Third gear on the way in. Fourth gear on the exit as you try and get over the curbing. And then down all. Running very, very wide through the penultimate. One of the penultimate corners of the lap. Getting all out of shape here. And this lap's come undone again. Right towards the very end there. Out of the final corner. We just want to get the front end pointed through. Not going to be our best lap in the world though. As we head up towards the line. It's going to be a 22-3. Which puts us half a second behind Kimi. But if we just match the first half of the lap, the time will come in the second. Right, well, a minute left on the clock then as we get ready for our final lap here around Albert Park. We need to be quick again. The first half of that last lap was pretty good. But we've just got to try and be a little bit more consistent here. It's across the line. Let's just see if we can try and get this lap hooked up. Break again, really brave into turn one. Actually, a bit too brave through turn one there and just overstep the marks on the exit. Three tenths down immediately. 
on this final run there, and that's not what we needed. Break just at 100, keep it tidy through here. Definitely a bit of time to be had. Oh, but again, just nudging the wheel on the grass, and it's costing us on the exit. Avoid the curb and on the inside that time round. That is going to find us a little bit of time. So we tap the curbs oh, through the next corner. What is wrong with us? So far unqualified, just can't seem to get the car where we need it on these runs at the moment. I think we're just trying to chase a bit too much time, and it's just all falling away from us. Again, a little bit of wheel spin out onto the back straight. Four tenths down at the moment. We need to really nail the second half of the lap, and we might just improve. Sixth gear on the way in, seventh gear on the way out there. Took a lot of curve that time round, and that's going to propel us just a little bit down this straight. We've got Pierre Gasly and the Alpha Tauri all over the back of me. Do not care about that at the moment, as we've just got to keep it clean and tidy. Nudge the grass on the way in, nudge the gravel on the way out, and now we're back up into the green, but a bit deep through the penultimate corner. Try and get the car rotated to that apex. It's been a couple of horrible, horrible laps here, and we're not even going to improve at the end of the session there. It's another 22-3, and that is gutting. P19 on the grid. Well, there we go, then. Qualifying done and dusted for the Australian Grand Prix. And it's Bottas on pole, just 23 thousandths of a second queer. Queer? Clear of his teammate, Lewis Hamilton there. Verstappen in P3 ahead of Norris, Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez. And you can see, yeah, Mick Schumacher did end up going half a tenth faster than me to finish P18 in that session there. A little bit off our teammate, George Russell, as Alfa Romeo in a bit of no man's land this weekend. Fingers crossed we can try and stick with them. Let's dive in then here to the Australian Grand Prix. Welcome to the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne for what no doubt will be an intense day of racing. So here we are at the Albert Park circuit, 3.3 miles around the lake with the street track making for a bumpy surface with little undulation. There are 16 corners here with the best passing opportunities coming at turn one and turn three. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box and it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into Turn 1. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you, so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Norris, Charles Leclerc and Perez, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo, Stroll, Sainz, Yuki Tsunoda, and Raikkonen, Russell, Mr. Monaco, Nikita Mazepin, and Mick Schumacher. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Gasly and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Right, well, here we are then on the grid, ready for the penultimate race of the year here from Albert Park. Of course, as always, the soft-medium strategy is the way to go in this one. A few grid penalties around mean we have been elevated up to P16 alongside our teammate on row 8 of the grid, but fingers crossed we can keep it clean and tidy off the start here. Always at Albert Park, whether it's the first race of the year or the second to last, I still get, like, that first race of the season nerves. I guess it's just the nature of Turn 1 and Turn 3 here. Always make this place very, very interesting. But let's dive in then. Just two races to go of season one of the Williams Road to Glory. Championship still yet to be decided. Five red lights. And it is going to be lights out. And away we go. Oh, a little bit of wheel spin in the second phase there. Means we don't get off to the best start in the world. The Kita man spin down around the outside in towards turn one. Really getting on the power of the worldiest. Look at that. A load of cars. On the outside, drew over each other, and that's gone from one of my not particularly brilliant starts to, I think, the best one I've had on F1 at 2021 there. 16th to 10th 
on the exit of turn one. And that was just right place at the right time off the start of the Grand Prix there. That was the absolutely dream start for us. And straight up into the points here in Albert Park there. Esteban Ocon just behind us on a set of the medium compound tyres there. But just the parting of the seas for us. Obviously took a lot of curve through that first corner and made it work there. I think it was Aston, uh, Lance Stroll, I want to say, in the Aston Martin. Yeah, must have been because Sebastian Vettel is still just up in front of us there. So, yeah, strolled, and I'm not 100% sure who else it was. Both tripped over each other on the exit turn one. Of course, sim damage. No one even wants to risk going into each other. Of course, they normally would as we get a little bit out of shape on the exit of the fast chicane there. Not as badly as Daniel Ricciardo did, though, by the looks of it, just up in front. But, yeah, what a start here to the Australian Grand Prix. Was not expecting that early on in this race there. Looks like I think it's going to be Bottas who still leads the way as we head through the final couple of corners there. Looks like Max Verstappen though has made himself into a bit of a Mercedes sandwich here. Yeah, Bottas leads the way at the end of that one ahead of Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton there. Charles Leclerc in P4. Things we don't often hear in the Williams Road to Glory. Yeah, Charles Leclerc P4 ahead of Lando in fifth place there. But that has been the dream start for us. The only problem is we're probably going to spend a lot of this race focusing on our mirrors instead of trying to look forwards. I'm actually starting to wonder whether Daniel Ricciardo does have DRS some damage here. This lap. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. DRS has now been enabled. Just watching the way Ricciardo goes through that fast chicane, I think he has got a little bit of damage, whether it's side pod or front wing, because we're not really putting the way from Ocon behind us, but Seb up the road is romping away with sort of that front cluster of cars. So yeah, we can put some, you know, sort of get past Ricardo, put some distance between us and Ocon. We might actually be able to pull away from the homeboy. Yeah, if we watch on board then with Daniel Ricardo as he head through the S's here, I'm sure this time around he won't get out of shape there. But you can just see, has to do a big, big correction through the mid part of the corner there, like he's trying to carry too much speed in. So to the outside we go of Daniel Ricardo here, pretty even on the brakes. Going to have to wake up pretty early in the morning to outbreak Danny Rick. Nice Good job. But we just about make the move work around the outside there. Thought you might try and send it again in towards the third last corner. But now up into ninth place of the Australian Grand Prix. What a start to the race it has been for us. Could we still have a couple more points opportunities before Season 1 wraps up in this series? There's still 26 more laps of racing though. And I'm really hoping at the moment Ricardo's just about gone enough pace to keep up on a bay. 4.4 seconds. Because, yeah, for us, it's really working rather nicely at the moment. Gap already up to two seconds here. And, you know, really what we're doing is we're racing to create a gap. But then as soon as the pit window comes round, Daniel Ricciardo is just going to fall back behind those guys. And then we're all going to close back up to us. So we are really racing for the long game here. As soon as I say that, Ocon tries to have a look around the outside. And I think he might have pulled off a move. So we get all out of shape through the final couple of corners. Horrible line through there. I think Ocon's done it though, has he? Ricardo's still coming back at him. They're side by side out of the final corner. It looks like they're going to drag a race back in towards turn one. I think Ocon now has pulled off the move. Yes, he has. Ricardo loses two places in one as Carlos Sykes gets by. So now, yeah, these guys are going to be trying to close back up to me. Be aware, we expect the grip levels to start falling away soon. To be honest, as we head on to lap eight here, Esteban Ocon in the Alpine. He's not taking any time out of us at the moment. We've seen, actually, in the second half of this year, Alpine have really fallen back in towards the back markers. So he's still trying to defend from Carlos Sainz for us. So it really has been the perfect storm early on in this Grand Prix. We've just got to try and keep ourselves to ourselves. As Sainz, yeah, still hovering just behind him, about four seconds back. That's not the line through there, though. We're lucky to keep it going in the right way. Oh, we got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues in this Grand Prix. Is it a car behind us? I think it is. Looks to be the Alpha Tauri. I want to say a Pierre Gasly falling to the wayside in this Grand Prix. And that could really change up the strategy here. Actually in Albert Park. If we get a safety car now, it would probably be worth pitting onto those mediums and taking them through to the end of the Grand Prix. No, it's Yuki Sonoda out of the Australian Grand Prix. That's the second time today, actually. We've thought it was the wrong Alpha Tauri then, mainly because of what position they were in. But yeah, poor Yuki Sonoda out of the Australian Grand Prix. Our first retirement of the day, and not even 10 laps in. There is the stricken Alpha Tauri on the inside of the racetrack there, but intrigued to see what 
when the rest of the field start to pit. I think Charles Leclerc's already made the call. He's gone on to a set of hard compound tyres. But are we going to see many of the other front runners in? There we go. First few runners into the pits. It's Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, and Max Verstappen. Oh, box this lap. Push hard on the in lap. Of course, three of the four world champions heading into 2022. They've all gone on to mediums, though. So that was a big snap of oversteer out of turn one. Russell dives in behind in us. George in the pits. But yeah, these tyres are definitely coming to the end of their life. Their gap to Ocon has just started to come back down. As now, yeah, we're really skating all over the show. More iconic duo than this Williams car and its tyres fading just before the end of a stint. I'll wait. But anyway, into the final few turns of lap 12. We've done pretty well to hang on the tyres in the way we have. But yeah, they've definitely come to the end of their usable life. Tip it into the pit lane. Don't hit the wall. Don't get oversteer as well. Make sure we get it slowed down nice and tidily. Only just 37 on the dot as we head into the lane. Oh, we got more yellow flags out there. Looks like one of the Alfa Romeos has got issues now. Is that Geo? Is that Kimi Raikkonen in this race? Who seems to be pulling over to the wayside. And would it have been worth staying out one lap longer? Are we going to see a safety car here in the Some Australian Grand Prix? They are out of the race. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. The answer would appear to be no there, as we have stayed ahead of Carlos Sainz, who is now going to be on one stage harder tyres than us to the end of the race. But we're still in the points at the moment. Of course, Esteban Ocon has still got to pit. Things are looking pretty good still. There we go, Fernando Alonso into the pits again. Why is Fernando boxed again in this Grand Prix there? That's going to hand back to us P9 in the race. But I'm guessing Alonso must have had some contact with someone, perhaps Sebastian Vettel in this race but poor old Fernando Alonso into the box once more and unless we get a safety car that's pretty much his day done and dusted well lap 16 now just over half distance in this race and Carlos Sainz in his Ferrari is really now starting to apply some pressure here he's only half a second back and if he gets some DRS he might be allowed a bit of a window here he hasn't just romped up to me though he's kind of just slowly brought back in the gap there as again I think we're just trying to hang on as best as possible against a much quicker car and some slightly worse tyres there. You can see how hard we're pushing as we try to put the power down out onto the back straight. But it, yeah, probably won't be for much good in the end as we nudge the wall there. Lucky to get away with that with no damage. Well, I don't know now whether Esteban Ocon's picked up some damage or in fact got a puncture in this Grand Prix because he is suddenly hemorrhaging time in this race. He's just flashed up back on our time in Delta. We've already taken like a second out of him. What's going on to Esteban Ocon here? Was he just battling another car, perhaps? Can't really afford to look down at the minimap at the moment because we've got a fiery car uh, Carlos Sainz all over the back of us here. But yeah, Esteban Ocon really starting to struggle. Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel just around him. But we will get back past Ocon through the pit stop phase again because, of course, he will be boxing in at the end of this one. But I think his tyres have probably hit the cliff here in the same way ours did at the end of the first stint. And by virtues of both Alpines having issues here, Alonso, of course, having a pit again. Ocon, of course, on the alternate strategy. We're going to be back up inside the top ten with a little bit of safety as well. We can afford to lose the place to Carlos Sainz. And we'll still be in ninth at the moment. However, Gasly further back is starting to look a bit feisty here. So we have still got to be careful. And, of course, Ocon, he's going to be on much fresher, quicker rubber between now and the checkered flag as well. Look at that, a 24-4. Have we, have we basically matched our qualifying time? No, I think it was a 20... No, it was a 22-3, sorry, I was going to say. Pace is feeling really, really good at this stage of the Grand Prix, but there's no way we'd be matching our qualifying time on some dying mediums with still a third of a tank of fuel. Well, I may have said about LP not being particularly fast, but Esteban Ocon, new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. He's running upwards of two seconds quicker than me at the moment, so it will not be long before the Alpines all over the back of us here. And we've already got Sainz still applying the pressure. Pierre Gasly bringing a few tenths in on us lap after lap. Nine to go here from Albert Park. And we've still got a mountain to climb if we want points. Pace is definitely starting to come away on these mediums. Sainz and Gasly are getting a little bit more sort of angsty about trying to get past us at this late stage of the race. Seven to go. Here from Albert Park, and we are still just trying to hang on. The rears are screaming at us at the moment. They're bleeding like nothing else. We're just sliding the car through some of the corners 
as we try to roll on the power as early as possible. And the fronts aren't having much of a better time of it. We're asking so much from them at this stage of the day. But of course, there's so many places around here where there's just no room to pass still. So we're just trying to make sure we're quick where we need to be. Places like that where we just use a bit of deploy. Oh, that might be why we're struggling. I don't know if that was just that curb use then or what. But yeah, now we've got some underfloor damage. That's not going to help us late on in this race. Or again, we hold on this time around ahead of Carlos Sainz. Down in towards the final few corners. But yeah, we are really trying to drag everything from this car as Ocon is still flying just a bit further back. Team just warning oh, us about the underbody again. But five laps to go here from Australia. And it looks like these guys have been able to get right to us. But the dirty air is just not allowing Carlos Sainz to do anything at the moment. Really sliding through turn four there. Both felt like we had oversteer and understeer. Which is, yeah, not a, not a great combination to have at the moment. But come on, we can do this. We are definitely having issues with tyre wear. Jeff, these tyres are roasted beyond belief. But we can do this. Defending like our life depends on it. Your MFD for a new strategy option. And that's not going to help. Just skim Confirmed. the wall. Okay. Ahead is seconds. That's definitely not the line through there. But it's all just starting to come a bit undone. Just like we saw at Albert Park. Uh, sorry, uh, Interlagos even last time round. Tiny bit of front wing damage. That doesn't seem to be actually costing us all too much. But the team reckon it was worth a pit stop. No, that feels fine in fact. Uh, yeah, I don't think we picked up anything there. Perhaps the team just thought it might be worth boxing again for some fresh rubber. I don't know. I'm so confused, but four to go. And all I do know is we are hanging on by a thread. Here comes Carlos Sainz, though, pretty much immediately after I say that, to the outside, in towards turn three there, and we'll go super aggressive on the brakes there to make sure we stay in front of the Ferrari. That was exactly what we needed there. And it pushes him about a second back as well. Hopefully those guys can trip over each other and we can be given a little bit of breathing room. But Sainz now, yeah, definitely on the attack. Is Carlos Sainz going to get close again? This time round, we're just a little bit further in front. And he thinks twice about going for a send on us. But yeah, three laps to go here in Australia. Jeff needs to stop repeating what I'm saying and just adding fuel remaining to the end of it. But... Come on, we can do this. Oh, we got yellow flags out towards the front of the field. I'm not too sure whether it's actually one of the front runners or one of the lapped cars. I think I might have just been a lapped car trying to get out of the way. Yeah, it seems to all be sorted now. No late race drama yet. But that could still all unfold now with Sykes getting all over the back of us with the DRS. I mean, he used so much battery just to hang on in front. Two more laps. Oh, here comes Carlos Sainz again, this time round to the inside, wasn't defending that early enough. And oh, Sainz really tried to be aggressive there, tried to do what we did to him a couple of laps ago. But again, we just hang him out to dry. Ocon is just sat there with so much better tyres, just watching this unfold. He's the one that really should be trying to go for moves here, taking all the risks possible. we got two Frenchmen and a Spaniard just behind us still. Incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now, just be careful. Oh, here comes Sainz again as one of the Haas cars looks to have binned it in the gravel trap by themselves. But Sainz, yeah, is leaning on us so much, trying to find any sort of opportunity he can to make the move. Gasly now trying to look around the outside of him. As I think they've all held on for now in unison. But you can see Sainz, though, again, gains rapidly on us into Sector 3. This is a four-way scrap for the final points. Here in Albert Park, four cars, four different teams, four different power units. Ocon's now made the move work on Pierre Gasly. Has he? They still seem to be side by side just behind us. And it looks like Ocon might just be able to get the power down now. But one to go here from Australia. Are we going to see those two out of the picture if they keep battling each other? Final lap of the race. Team just reminding us, final lap of the Grand Prix. But now we need to go full deploy down in towards turn three here that's not the run you want out of turn two they're going very very defensive on Carlos Sainz just park it in the middle of the road there he actually runs into the back of me down into turn three they're just pure frustration from Carlos Sainz there and maybe that's giving him a tiny bit of front wing damage on the final lap of this Grand Prix there he doesn't seem to be dropping back too much Ocon has definitely pulled off the move 
on Pierre Gasly, but we're just nursing these tyres through to the end of the Grand Prix there. It looks like Lewis Hamilton is going to come out of the final corner, and it looks like he is going to win the Australian Grand Prix and might just have taken the Drivers' World Championship with it this weekend there. Max Verstappen comes through for P2 out of an absolutely gutted Valtteri Bottas there, but in towards the final sector, We've got much more important things at stake for us at the moment. We get a horrible run. Carlos Sainz to the outside in towards the final few corners of the Australian Grand Prix. They're much, much later on the brakes, but can't make the move work. Ocon thought about it up the inside of the Ferrari, but can't hold on at the moment. Two corners to go. Break it really nice and early through these final two turns. Absolutely horrible to get right in the Williams, but final corner. It's going to be more points on the board for Williams. The perfect race weekend. And we get 8th in the ninth fastest car. Alright, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. And so the celebrations begin, and well earned they are indeed. It may have looked simple at times, but as any racing driver will tell you, competing at this level, at the very top, is anything but simple. There's no catching them now then. We have a new World Drivers Champion. That's a spectacular victory then, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. Now, let's discuss, Ant. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. It's another clear win for Mercedes as they managed to secure the Constructors' title. An incredible performance for the whole team. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the Australian Grand Prix. And, yes, yeah, safe to say that was pretty much all decided on lap one for us. A few other things fell into place. There's no arguing against that. But really, really happy with the way the race weekend went down on the whole there. Hamilton, though, does wrap up a record-breaking eighth Formula One World Championship. Pretty much every series we've done on F1 2021 so far, Hamilton has been crowned champion. Won't happen in my team, though. I think he is now mathematically out of it with just three races to go of the season there. But Verstappen P2 ahead of Valtteri Bottas, who I'm sure, yeah, has run arguably his greatest ever campaign in Formula 1, but just not quite close enough to his teammate Lewis Hamilton there. Lando Norris in fourth ahead of Perez there. The club did well on a bit of a botch strategy to hang on to P6 ahead of Seb and myself there. With Carlos Sainz and Esteban Ocon rounding out your top 10 there. Gasly just misses out, but yeah, Ocon fast lap bonus point as well. For him and Alpine there. Further down the order, Alonso with that screwed strategy. Not too far away in the end there. Russell moved up one spot from 15th to 14th there. Daniel Ricciardo and Lance Stroll both really, really struggled. And then Gio and Sonoda both not making it to the checkered flag. Means, yeah, 41 points between Hamilton and Bottas when all is said and done here. So Hamilton can have a nice cruise in the final race of the year there. Uh, Bottas here, yeah, 41 back. Max Verstappen and pretty much solidified P3 in the title. Still potential to swing between Lando and Sergio Perez there. That's been a gap that's just been getting closer and closer in the final few races there. Could Lando Norris take P4 away from Sergio Perez there? Leclerc jumps Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, Sebastian Vettel jumps his teammate Lance Strong in that ever ebbing and flowing battle between those two. But we're now just four points behind Esteban Ocon. Five points behind Fernando Alonso with just one race to go of the year. We need a bit of a miracle in Abu Dhabi 
but it might just happen there. Mercedes is still way out on top. Doesn't really look like Alpine could jump Alpha Tauri if they have a good final race weekend of the year. But apart from that, pretty much all seems to be decided at this stage of the campaign. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with the finale of Season 1 of the Williams Road to Glory. We head to Abu Dhabi. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel supporters. So a massive thank you to The Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, Estathios, Cato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, Mighty Spork, Tazief, William, and Nanon for becoming channel members. If you want to be featured at the end of all these videos, make sure you just click the join button down below.